All right, uh, slide number three. Oh, that's too far. There you go. All right, uh, so we're, we're talking about vehicle, vehicle anatomy and science. Um, so there, there is five types of vehicles. So we got passenger vehicles. Okay, designed for 10 or less people or less. Uh, light trucks, okay, common types. If you look on page 71, uh, 72, there's all kinds of pictures. Everything from minivans to cars to light trucks, uh, sports cars, limos, okay, all that kind of stuff. Those are the passenger vehicles. Mid-size, full-size. I don't know who drives a station wagon anymore, but they're probably out there. A kit car. I always thought a kit car was that car that drove itself in the 1980s show, but they have a cool picture of a kit car, a Locust 7. Okay. That's not what I thought a kit car was. <clears throat> medium and heavy trucks. So there's three categories in medium and heavy trucks. Straight trucks, semi, semis, trans, semi-transports, and specialty trucks. Okay, so a straight truck is... Uh, Something with two two or more axles or three or more axles, okay, and it's one unit. So a garbage a garbage truck, gravel truck, okay, those are considered straight trucks. Semis, okay, a tractor trailer, uh, two two distinct units, and specialty trucks. So you've got fire trucks. Uh, back trucks can be considered a straight truck or a specialty truck, okay. If it's haul, you know, depending on what it's used for. Uh, big RVs okay, are considered specialty trucks. Uh, the difference between medium and heavy, so a medium truck is between 6,300 and 15,000 kgs. That might be a number you want to highlight in your book. Okay, And what dictates a heavy truck is 15,000 kgs plus. I don't know, but that just kind of seems one of those, a question that the government would ask. Agricultural equipment, okay, that's a, that's a, a vehicle. Uh, requires personnel to be familiar with a variety of types. Next, or, sorry, two slides, John. Kind of getting ahead of myself. Next one. Okay, tractors, skid steers. Uh, we all know all the different farm machinery out here, okay. Uh, they all have their set of challenges, okay, with access, uh, when they tip over. Uh, we had a fatality recently here last year uh, when a, I think it was a tractor that tipped over and uh, it, it, into a ditch full of water and was submerged and the operator just couldn't, couldn't get out and he was trapped and basically drowned, okay? So they have, they have their sets of challenges. They're not the most stable things, but again, they're not the most speediest either, right? You're not you're not seeing a combine going down the highway doing 110. All right. Uh, buses transport large numbers. Next slide. So buses transport large numbers of people. So you've got all the different kinds of types of buses here. I mean, know them. I I wouldn't go too much in depth. Okay, what, what all the types are. All right, but buses carry lots of cargo that can create a lot of lot of uh, headaches for emergency responders. Okay, the moment you get a dispatch call for a bus, what are you thinking? First thing, what's that? Kids. Okay, multiple kids. Patients. Multiple patients, right? The moment you say school bus, <laughs> multiple children. But yours is type A bus. <laughs> This is the, I'm the specialty bus, the handicap bus. <laughs> I had my own car in school, so I drove myself to school. I didn't take a bus. Um, okay, so yeah, you're, you're thinking mass, mass patients, right? Again, uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of challenges with buses, all right? And heavy equipment machinery provide... Additional extrication challenges. Next slide. Okay. 
I don't know if a forklift has a whole lot of extrication challenges, but uh, I mean, every piece of equipment, okay, sharp uh, like a grater, okay. How many people are very familiar with graters? Like, I've operated them and we're well, well tuned with them, okay. You know what, there's a lot of pinch points and there's a lot of things that you can bang your knees on, bang your head on, that a normal car, okay, a lot of this equipment, okay, that you just don't, aren't aware of. So again, it comes a lot to rescuer, rescuer safety, understanding it. So if you've got somebody on your department that is very familiar with heavy equipment, okay, they're a good person to have as a safety officer. You know what, stay away from there, you know what? This is an okay spot, right? They know those things. I, I wouldn't profess myself to be any kind of an expert on heavy equipment, but there are people out there that are knowledgeable about it. Use that resource, okay? Next slide. What are the five main classifications of vehicles? Jamie, one. Light. Light. A vehicle. Okay. So we have passenger vehicles. Johnny, another one. Medium, truck. medium heavy. Medium heavy trucks. Jordan, another one? No, no luck. Passenger cars, medium to heavy trucks. Buses. Buses. Right? Like a large truck. Yeah, that, that fits into medium heavy trucks. Sherry? Agricultural equipment. Agricultural. Different. And what? Specialty. Specialty. Okay. Is it specialty or is it heavy? Oh, heavy equipment. Awesome. All right, next slide. And next one. Okay, we're on page 78. Okay. 84. What's that? 84. Actually, it starts on 78 and then oh, it shuffles sorry. over sorry. about, okay. uh, then it shuffles to 84, 85. So there's eight, every vehicle has eight components. Know these eight components. Roof. Undercarriage, driver's side, passenger side, front, rear, interior, exterior. Okay? They will definitely question you on that. Roof, undercarriage, driver's side, passenger side, front, rear, interior, exterior. How many different how many different materials make up a car in today's world? <laughs> Lots. Steel, aluminum, magnesium, copper, plastics, composite, alloys, glass, rubber, cast iron. Okay? Tons of that stuff. Is any of that stuff in uh, a hazard with fire? Yes. Yeah, rubber. Plastics, all that kind of stuff, okay? Magnesium. Magnesium. Uh, next slide, John. So they made that, that uh, one picture on 84, 3.6. They might have a picture of that and make you identify it. So just know those parts. Okay, so there's a lot of materials in our vehicles nowadays. Next slide. I'm not going to go over armored cars. Okay, read that little little blurb on there. Next one. Next one. And next one. Okay, there's three kinds of different. There's three different frames: full or rigid, unibody, and space frame. So a full or rigid body, a full or rigid frame is. <clears throat> The traditional vehicles where they built a frame, uh, the chassis, and then they set a they set the body and all the components on top of it. Okay, <clears throat> a unibody is the entire outer shell and the chassis are all one unit, and then they start making components. Has any everybody ever built a, a model car? Okay, those are generally unibodies because you've got this vehicle and you stick the tires on and you glue the engine in, okay, and then you put your hood on and then you put your seats in, right, okay. But if you've got a chassis and then you have to glue the top of the car on, 
Okay, that's a full or a rigid frame. Okay, and a space frame is very similar to a full, uh, a full rigid or a full frame, but they've got the whole car. Uh, planes, planes are a classic example of uh, a space frame. So they've got this entire uh, uh, body, and then they wrap the, the 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 material that makes up the vehicle around it. So does that make sense? Okay. This looks a lot like a dune buggy. Okay. But uh, what kind of cars uh, utilize this? Race cars. Okay. Race cars, yes. The dragsters. The dragsters. So high performance uh, sports cars. Okay. Have that. What is the advantage of that? Light. Very light. Go zoom, zoom. Okay. The unibodies are very. Uh, they, they don't have unibody trucks now, do they, Code? I don't think the last ones were. K cars are what unibodies? They used to be. Uh, well, there's lots of unibodies out there still now. Oh, I said trucks. Sorry. Oh, yeah, just for Not trucks. Not for trucks, but no. a lot of like the SUVs and crossovers have yeah. gone back to that. Okay. Uh, next slide. The next one. Hey, supplemental and rollover protection systems. Okay, so SRS supplemental restraint systems. Okay. They may ask a question on that, uh, like a definition. Uh, and I was trying to find what ROPS means, but... Rollover protection system. Rollover protection system. Okay. So it, it provides... It, it, they were designed to uh, basically uh, prevent or protect the occupants of the vehicle uh, from the impact uh, in, a, in a collision. What else do they have uh, for systems now uh, that help? Retentioners. Retentioners. What's that? They have yeah, they've got tons of electronic things. Crumple zones now, where you see a car and you pull up and you're like, hey, there's no way anyone's alive in that car. And there they are sitting there like... They're designed to do it now. That's what they're designed, right? Because they're just, the engineers are coming up with more and more safe, more and more ways to be to be safe. But yet, you know what? When you were in a 1972 Impala, you know, if you had your seatbelt on, it was you know you got a quite a you know some hip damage and some stomach damage. But I mean, that was two large pieces of steel hitting each other, and yet people survived. But uh, little four cylinder engines don't run those things, so the cars got lighter and they also got more dangerous. So. Uh, next, next slide. Okay. Difficult to stay current. Okay, you're not on top of these all the time. Okay, like I swear it was only a couple of years ago there was one airbag in a vehicle. Now there's some that are like 60 plus in some of the Mercedes and BMWs, and you're like, how did they get 60 airbags in there? But they are now. Okay, potential safety hazard. Yes, they are a safety hazard, and we have to be cognizant of every time we go into a vehicle or around a vehicle. Okay, we have to be we have to we have to know that almost every vehicle on the road now, unless it's some classic car cruising down the down the highway, <clears throat> that <clears throat> so it doesn't block it. So uh, that have airbags. Okay, so we would we don't want to be sticking our head through windows. Okay, uh, we don't want to be putting ourselves between the steering wheel and a patient, if all possible. Okay, again, what are the odds of it going off? It's very, very, very slim. All right. Okay, but again, uh, you know, how many people would walk, you know, around a, a tower three hundred feet above the ground? Would you do it if you had a full harness on and all the appropriate safety gear? Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing, right? Don't put yourself in harm's way, okay? Uh, they're not readily identified. There's no, you know, you don't look in a Mercedes car and see little bright orange arrows, you know, safety, you know, uh, you know SRS here, right? You, you've got to know that, and that's the challenge. And this is where mechanics are great for this because they know, uh, they know these things. 
You got guys like Cody or parts guys that you'll deal with these things. If you don't want to cut through one, okay? So again, having knowledge. There are some people out there that just know these things and utilize that resource. Okay, next one. So the front front impact airbags, they're a supplement to seat belts, basically stop you from making uh, high impact colli uh, collision with the steering wheel, the windshields, the sides, okay? Just bounce and throw your pen all over the place, okay? Again, there's three forces that need for airbags, okay? What were they? They need speed, not acceleration, speed. So you have to be moving. Speed. Deceleration and impact. Okay. So you have you have to be you have to be moving. The sensors now say so you have to be you have to be moving. There has to be a deceleration and there has to be an, an impact for the airbags to, to go off. Okay? They're electronically operated with millions of sensors in the cars. Okay. Very like within like how long does it take? One sensor sends it to another module, sends it back to the airbag sensor, and deploys it. Yeah, within fractions of a second. Within fractions of a second, okay? and come out with. I'm hoping that maybe uh, if this weekend or the next practical weekend that Tony's going to set off some airbags just so people can see the explosive force of one happening, and uh, you put a we'll put rescue Randy over one of them and watch that thing fly like. It's a, a violent force that you don't want to be in front of, okay? Side impact protection systems, okay? They're mechanically operated, all right? So uh, same as all the head curtains, okay? Uh, that has to be from, uh, there has to be force on it, okay? Uh, it detects, it, so you don't have to have deceleration or speed, for those to activate, it has to be some kind. It has to be an impact. Now, it has to be violent impact. But if you cut through a post that had a window curtain with a, could you activate it? Yes, potentially. Okay. Again, what? But what else does that need? It needs active power. Okay. A lot of the vehicles now, uh, you shut them down. Okay. You don't have to cut battery powers. Okay, it could be just simply turning the key off and then it's it's disabled. All right. I wouldn't bet my entire life on it all the time, but again, it's being aware, being sensitive that you know what, you're in a you're in a zone that could have uh, restraint systems. Uh, next next slide. Okay, they do not require power. So that was the side impact ones. Next slide. Okay, we talked about that one. Next slide. So knee bolsters protect the lower legs of the driver. So again, this is in supplement for uh, crumple zones. As a vehicle crumples, it sends out uh, airbags so that when your knees come out, Okay, it gets a cushion and then and then it deflates. Okay, and remember this is all within seconds. If your head's down there, okay, you know you've got other issues. Okay, I shouldn't see any rescuer that is down there. Okay, who could be down there? Somebody that would be on their own. Somebody in the vehicle. Yeah, I'm thinking you know EMS may be doing an assessment. Okay, on legs. Okay, just keep in mind that you know what the doors. The door is most likely going to be open, okay, if you're in that position to do an assessment, okay, but just keep in mind, and it's not all vehicles have these, right? Some the the vehicles we're talking that have every one of these airbags are the high-end cars. Uh, did the Lincolns have more than the normal Ford's code? Uh, they have a few more, yeah. few more? I know Mercedes. I don't know. Mercedes are huge. And BMWs, like massive amounts of airbags in those things. So, uh, next. Okay. 
Anybody didn't know that a seatbelt's intended to restrain the wearer? What? Okay, please not please dot that down. Test question. Test question. Okay, next one. Okay, so pretensioners. Does anybody not know what a pretensioner is? Yeah. Okay. I thought I heard something. Somebody's microphone's on. Somebody's got. Okay. It's located in the B post. All right. And so does it need just deceleration or does it need impact, right? It, yeah, it does need impact. It's basically, it'll get another signal. It's another sensor on its own. It's actually a tag or it's a pretensioner. And they're basically the older ones. I think they're really different now. They used to be an explosive charge, basically. They've been pretensioned by the seatbelt. Place, Has anybody ever done that? Put their seatbelt on, and then you're just like, you know, you got your coat's caught or something. You get stuck. Yeah, you get stuck. It's like, like slowly go back and move forward. It's like, yeah, fix my coat. That basically detects your seatbelt moving a lot faster than it should. Yeah. So <laughs> it's simply it, it's sim it thinks that there's a deceleration or a sudden movement of your body, right? So then it's it's locking it. The, in the older, in the new ones, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of power. But doesn't, doesn't the pretensioner though have that little thing that actually cinches it back on you though? That's the one I was talking about. Where yeah. it's almost like an explosive charging. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, right. What, and what it does is it. So if you're leaning forward, okay, and it senses an impact, it locks it back it so that yeah. you can't. So not because that's what you, in the old seat belts, right? It would lock, and that's how you got that when you lean back. It would, and then. You wouldn't be able to move forward, right? Unless you kind of made this little motion to get it moving. But in impact, the pretensioners lock everything. And it doesn't matter what you do, it's strapping you back in your vehicle. And with that movement, that forward movement, the airbags coming forward, that's all part of that of that uh, restraint system. So <clears throat> So you see here where it says a safe cut, okay? Yeah, you don't want to be in that that area. So when we're cutting B posts, you want it as close to the top as possible and to the to the bottom, as close to the bottom as possible. Um, next slide. Child safety restraint devices, okay? They're factory in a lot of the newer vehicles now, all right? I mean, God forbid you have to go to an incident with children, okay? That in its, okay, seatbelts, tensioners, all of that stuff has really nothing on your mind except, you know, except uh, when there's a child involved, okay? And there's probably no one here that is exempt from, you know, you've got a niece, your child, a nephew, okay? When children are involved, emotions go this way, okay? And from an incident command or an officer, you know what, you've got to keep everybody level-headed, okay? Because as soon as there's children involved, okay, there's a lot of emotions, and I, I've been there myself, okay? And it's very challenging, okay? <clears throat> uh, I've never seen, I mean, outside of the very, very first call I ever went to on EMS, my first vehicle in incident, I've never seen damage to a child in a car seat yet. And but the research shows actually if you actually buckle the kids with the jackets or you know, want their jackets on, they can actually fly out of the seats through the jacket. And there's yeah. a, a there's a huge book in those boxes when you get a car seat. Okay, you know, tell people to read them because there's a lot of information there and these car seats have come so far now uh, that it, it's, it's amazing, okay? But yeah, it's, uh, you don't want a child in a whole bunch of, especially little, little children, okay? You, they're, you can actually bundle them uh, as part of the seat now that the, the straps go through the, the covers. It, it's amazing like, what, what they can do now. Uh, John, John was just saying he believes it's law 
Cody, you might know this, uh, that any vehicle that isn't equipped with URD, the universal restraint device for car seats, you can take vehicles to dealerships and have them installed for free. Have you heard that, Cody? There are certain vehicles where they don't equip you can order in anchors for them. You can order in the anchors? Yeah. A lot of them do come back to you with them. So, I mean, all my trucks have all them. Right, so it is, uh, it is an option up there if you, if you look into that, if you want to look into that. And I'm not sure what year it is. I have a two. I have a 2003 truck and the anchors are in my truck. Yep. My old one uh, has it. And I'm sure my old 97 uh, but Ford. I, but I, I did. Yeah, I think my 97 Ford had it. Uh, but my, 90, my 95, I think I had to get it installed. So and basically what that is, it's just... It's a hook that the, the seat straps and it's attached to the frame. And basically it, there's no there's no way that that seat can come dislodged if it's if it's hooked up properly. Um, there's, from what I understand right now, there's nobody in town in Beggarville that is licensed to do uh, child seats. Okay. Do you guys have them in your dealers? Yeah, like to install them? No. Okay. So I thought the health unit. I thought the health no, unit. The health unit doesn't have any one anymore. Okay. Sorry. They always, uh, they always come to the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. People, the, the people, nurses, and they they go see the fire department. We are not trained in doing an inspection and making sure that people have done their car seats properly. Of course, so they're out there. They're out there. Uh, I'm actually looking that might send somebody to a couple of people to a course it's like a i think it's a two-day course on how to install and properly inspect car seats so uh, speaking of car seats we're cleaning our friend's garage is it people sell car seats no it is against the law to sell a used car seat okay you, I've seen them on Facebook, yeah, you buy yeah. and sell. Okay. You make, buy your yeah, you have no idea what that car seat went through. Okay, uh, it's, can you sell it? You know what? If you want to sell one to your brother, sure. If you want to buy one, that's up to you. But just know that there's no liability to come back uh, if something ever happened to your child. Okay, and so I tell people do not ever buy a used car seat because you have no idea what that went through. Was it dropped from a second story window? Uh, maybe it wasn't an impact. You know, it could have been, uh, you know what, grandma backed over a car seat when it was in the garage because you were cleaning the car. And, you know, oh, so we'll, we'll get a brand new one, but we'll put this one on buy and sell. Okay? One other thing to uh, mention in the comments that if your vehicle's in a car accident, even a fender bender, that car seat's no one boy. Yeah. And that says it right on the manufacturers. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the expiry date. So uh, a lot of people don't realize that there's expiry dates sure. on, on them. Yeah. So, But yet we have this, they have that new Graco now that is a one-time car seat. So they say from infancy till the time they are no longer needed a booster seat. It's one one seat. It's got three three separate uses so for the lifetime of the... Yeah. You have two of them? We have two of them. We look, uh, and they're in the booster seat stage now. Well, one of them is. But I, I want to sell them, but I can't. Like, <laughs> they're, they're not cheap, but they are good seats. You'll just have to have more kids to Shush. enjoy their car. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> okay, next. Thank you. Yeah. Next one. <clears throat> okay, so we got uh, absorbing struts, uh, crushable bumpers. Uh, what's that? It's a Saturn. Saturn. Yeah, that is too. Yeah. Uh, the next, the next few slides. They're talking about crumple zones, uh, energy absorbing steering columns. Okay. These are all new things now that the engineers are, are designing to uh, to make to make it safer for occupants in 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 collisions. Okay. Compression cylinders, collapsible columns, that when there's impact made, that sensors are just are uh, basically taking the steering wheel uh, and 
getting it out of the way for us. Basically preventing, we owe, the airbag still goes off, and you're talking about within a second, all of these things happen. The impact is still there. The occupant is getting restrained. And then every, but when we come there, you know what, now, now we're not having to do uh, the massive dash rolls because you just got to pull the steering wheel out of the way now, right? Rather than uh, trying to cut it or, you know, lift, lifting the steering wheel. Because there's some pretty good techniques out there that uh, we're going to work on on the weekend of how to move a steering wheel. I mean, our guys have seen it already, okay? But this is all new engineering now, and it's, they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to maintain this. So can you see why constant training and knowledge is important? To, to know all these things, you just can't keep up. It's the same thing with with dangerous goods, right? There's so much out there, you just can't keep track of it all unless you're in a DG team, and that's what you do all day, okay? But we do this quite often, so we have to we have to constantly be talking. We have to constantly be training about this. We haven't even got into hybrid, right? Which is its own full set of challenges. Uh, Next slide. So this is a rollover, but uh, next one. You have the side impact beams and bars there. So uh, rollover protection systems. Uh, as these, I don't know if these are just in convertibles that come out. I know a lot of vehicles have, a lot of Jeeps have the rollover system in, uh, in, in them. Uh, and most of them, they don't even have that. What's that? They don't have that rollover support. A lot of the new ones now they come out electronically uh, up, so that when you're driving along and you're in your convertible, it's got the a rollover bar that you can come up. My buddy's got it in his Mustang that he presses a button, his hard top goes down, and then he presses another button and his roll up his ball bar can come up, or he can drive with it down. You see, uh, Al is yes. doesn't have one. I think it's just only a, So does he not have one, or he doesn't, think he doesn't I use think it? I think it's it, 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 it in his back, though. It's no. back there. No, it doesn't have any. There's no bar in there. Yeah, it's some of the iconic ones that they're saying, if they flip out once you exceed a certain degree of... Yeah. Oh. If they flip out, that's what the book... That's what that it says is. exceeds 23 degrees from a horizontal <laughs> lateral angle of 62 degrees or a longitudinal angle of 72 degrees, it deploys. It's yeah, kind of like an airbag when you exceed a certain... Uh, a so it's not a roll bar. Not all the time, but it just still come off the screen. Uh, Matt Slevin says the rear of the headrest can also shoot up in some models, too. Ooh, there you go. Good. Some good information. Uh, a couple more slides. One more. Okay. Uh, types of glass uh, during... Uh, so laminated... So laminated glass is glass with plastic, a plastic film over it, okay? Tempered is glass with a laminate sheet in between, right? Yeah. That when it, when it uh, cracks, it basically splinters into tiny pieces. I think most of the new vehicles now, I don't know, does anybody out there in... No, in, sorry, sorry, tempered is not with the plastic sheeting. Tempered it, is it, like the side windows. Tempered is the side windows that crack. They yeah, crack, crack into fine, fine pieces. pieces. It's it's not, there's no plastic tinted. sheeting on them. So unless, is, unless there's a tinting involved with it. But Okay, so the the windshields are, are tempered glass. Right? No, windshields are they are laminated? laminated. Yeah. Windshields are safety, safety, safety laminated? Safety laminated glass. Right, so they... Side windows. Yeah, okay, yeah. The tempered ones are the ones that break into fine little pieces like side windows. Without the plastic in them. So I... I just read somewhere that they're changing uh, all vehicle windows to a certain glass now, or possibly it will be tempered then. They're possibly thinking of everything going to safety glass. Everything going to safety glass. Okay. Polycarbonate. So okay. Maybe it's oh, yeah. polycarbonate that we're building. But yeah, tempered are the designed to spread small fracture lines throughout the plate when struck, separating into many small pieces. Okay. Yeah, transparent armored glass. I, uh, I've never ever come across that. Mm. Bet you the president's card got it. 
It's like I wouldn't doubt if uh, political leaders cars have done that. Okay, so the boat will be open. Transparent armor or ballistic glass are commonly made of sheets of polycarbonate material sandwiched between sheets of glass. Even pressure used to laminate and it prevents anything from piercing the glass. James McGonagall says uh, some new tempered side glass windows will not break. They had an MVC recently and the voice could not break it no matter how hard they tried. It's polycarbonate. Well, I'm thinking. That's what the boat says. That's the stuff that's really hard to penetrate the brakes. Okay. Mm. So, like, does, does James know what uh, vehicle that was? Not yet. James, if you hear that, and if you know what vehicle that was, uh, Jay and uh, Jay said brakes trucks have the armored transfer. Yeah, I would imagine all. Yeah, all. Yeah. There goes that plan. <laughs> James, it was a standard SUV. Can't remember a specific model. Hey, you were going to thank us. Was he talking about robbing armored cars? <laughs> you don't? Now where do you work? I can't hold his job. <laughs> All right. Hey, next slide. Oh, Matt was saying some of these glasses. Next one. Matt says some of this glass is part of the structural integrity system. Okay. Ooh. And next one. That one's voice on the plug. Conventional fuels can ignite easily. Steps should be taken to prevent fires. Uh, where do where do we where are we gonna get our fuel leaks from? Fuel tank? Fuel lines? What's that? A little bit. From trailers transporting fuel. What's that? From trailers transporting. Yeah, trailers transporting. For us, sleep tanks. What's that? Sleep tanks. Yeah. Uh, we're getting out of the, the motor vehicle part of this, but so isolating ignition sources uh, and controlling the leaks. Now, most of the new vehicles now have, I, I believe, have valves that when uh, a line is ruptured, you'll only lose a specific amount. Again, there's a lot of like the rollover valves. Can you freeze with those roll? You know, so fuel shut, shut off valves. Yeah, yeah, they shut yeah, off yeah, valves. That, yeah, it's got that electronic thing, yep. right? So then, yep. yeah, it stops. It, it, it you're basically limiting the amount of fuel that's going to leak out. Okay, unless you've got a punctured tank, there's nothing that's going to fix that except stop leak. Uh, What time are we at? Oh, we're at 10 already? Yep. Oh, boy. And I didn't get through chapter four. Home reading. Mm-hmm. Oh, chapter four. Three. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, well, uh, Maybe Thursday we'll try to go through chapter four really quick in the beginning. Uh, I was going to start at seven on Thursday. Is that okay with everybody? Everybody online, is that fine? We're going to do less chapters on on, on Thursday. I'll so I know what they say here. Uh, Matt says yes. Doug says seven's good. So far, so good. Yeah. Okay, so. Read through chapter four uh, if you haven't already, and then five, six, seven for Thursday. Four through seven for Thursday. That's that. Four seven. Yeah, we should have had four done for today, but <laughs> that's it. So chapter four is about all the extrication equipment. Uh, I mean, and judging by our class, uh, I think most people have uh, a good idea of what all our equipment. Uh, equipment is in the styles of trucks, so that should be uh, 